You're listening to the Faith Breathed Hope podcast, episode number 81. Today, I speak with father, author, entrepreneur, and online business coach, otherwise known as the vacation CEO, Omar Medrano, on faith, overcoming fear, and letting God guide you. Welcome to the Faith Breathed Hope podcast, where we gain inspiration and motivation from others who share their touching stories of renewing hope and discovering purpose in any circumstance. I'm your host, Christina Reisinger, and today we will be encouraged by another tremendously inspirational topic that will embolden you to release fear, begin taking small steps forward, and move into your God-given purpose to live and serve in this life. Join me for today's story. Hello, Omar, and welcome to Faith Breathed Hope. How are you today? I am feeling blessed. I'm alive. I'm here with you. God made made this day a perfect day. I'm here on Holy Week with you. I know it's not going to be it's not going to be aired for a little while, but still, I am mm-hmm. completely blessed and honored to be here with you. I am so glad that you are here and looking forward to getting to know you a little bit better during this conversation. Uh, the first thing I always have my guests do is share a little bit about themselves, maybe something that nobody in their circle knows. Do you have anything interesting? Uh, in, in my circle? Yeah, for sure. I always try to, to share stuff that I, I never do in my own podcast or in my own book. Uh, w- one thing is that God has always been there for me. There was even a time that, yes, I am a Christian. I am Catholic. I go to church. I am a believer. But there was a time in my life when I felt like God had left me, but he was always there for me. You know, during the bad times, everybody's like, oh, well, a non-believer or somebody that easily loses faith. Well, well why did my parent die? Why did this, my dog die? Why did my ex run off with and to be with someone else. But you know what? That's because God has bigger plans and bigger things in store. And mm-hmm. even when after, when I became a believer, when I, I became a person of loving God and loving who I am and knowing that God made me for great things and being worthy, I look back at that short period of time. It was like one or two or three years when I was young. And I was like, there were so many signs that he was there. And yes, during the bad times, he was always there for me. And and that's what I I, I tell people when, whenever they try to debate me and say, well, God's not like that, you know, that saying in that movie, God's not, not not real or God's dead, but yes, he's, he's here and he made you and me to thrive. So yeah, a lot of people don't know that I'm so spiritual and that I, I am a believer. Okay. That's good to know. (laughs) I'm glad that you're professing that here on the show. Um, you know, can you share with my audience a little bit about your story, some of the things that maybe uh, brought you to where you are today before we get into today's topic of having great fear that, um, sorry, great faith that conquers fear? Well, I, I, I was an entrepreneur for 20 years. I quit doing that because I was up at night and it was God, the Holy Spirit, something out there was telling me I wasn't doing my purpose. My purpose wasn't to just make money for myself. My purpose wasn't to be an entrepreneur. My purpose was to help others overcome fear, uh, to write a book, to do a podcast, to help one person, two people, three people, four people, five people at a time. I was a, I was a guy that I, I, I've beaten the odds, came from a single parent in the early seventies, where it was completely uncalled of to being a product of divorce. I had my junior high principal tell me it'd be a cold day in hell the day I graduated college. And he was right because it literally snowed the day I graduated from LSU in Louisiana. So I'm an overcomer. I'm a person that had so much fear and rejection, fear of unworthiness, fear of hearing no, that I went from a guy like that, that couldn't ask out a girl to becoming a top salesperson. So I'm, I've been there. I've done that. I've been in sales. I've been an entrepreneur. I've bought things. I've, I've, I've tried to create my own happiness until I realized that Jacques Cousteau journey, I didn't have to go all around the world. 
I, I realized that God loves me. And, and I, I woke up one day and realized that's all I need is to love myself and realize that at the end of the day, he loves me too. Right. Absolutely. And we keep our eyes pointed to him so that we, when our focus is on God, then our perspective is all about what he wants for us. Um, you mentioned a couple of different types of fear. So we talk about fear here on Faith Breathes Hope, um, probably, you know, more often than not, because it is a huge um, subject matter for any kind of loss, any kind of circumstances that people need to overcome. Uh, however, it could be the fear of um, moving forward after a loss. It could be for me, it was, it's always this huge fear about uh, losing someone else, possibly, you know, mm -hmm. people have a lot of different fear, but you mentioned fear of rejection and fear of being unworthy. And I would be willing to bet that almost everybody has experienced that. Um, you know, maybe even the most confident looking people in the back of their mind somewhere have this comparison thing. And we, we can maybe talk about that in a little bit too, um, that, that says, Hey, well, what if I'm rejected? What if this person is better than me? Um, you know, what if I'm not good enough? I think most people probably have even asked that question. What if I'm not good enough? Can you speak to those types of fears and you can do them both together or, you know, separate them, but that's, really, yes. Uh, yes. When it comes to fear, you know, you and I, we were made in God's image. It's in the Bible. It's in the good book. What that means to me is it wasn't to live on the crumbs of love. It wasn't on to live in the sidelines and saying one day, one day, one day. Yes, it's Holy Week. Just think about that. Jesus's passion for loving us, he went through all that for us. And, and that's, that's amazing. And yes, none of us were born with fear. Fear, what happens is we're born wanting to run, wanting to live life. We had innocence. We had the whole world in front of us. But then something happened. We heard no. We heard don't talk to strangers. Don't do this. This will get you hurt. This will get you killed. This is here to suffer. And that's, that was placed in us by our friends, by our family, by people that wanted to protect us and, and to instill us. Yes, my mom had this fear that everybody wanted to kidnap me, that every that my dad, even though my mom and dad got a divorce, that one day he would come back and kidnap me. Well, I'm 49 years, almost 49, and it's never happened. So it's just that fear of, OK, well, he said no. And it could be even on a not everything's a sale, including going out with someone. If I asked out a woman on a date. And she says, hey, you know what? No, that's not that I'm unworthy. That could be, it, it could be all the way up to God has bigger things in store for me. But in general, maybe she said no, because it's timing. Maybe she's seen someone. Maybe she's busy. Maybe she's overcoming her own past. Maybe she's just coming out of a horrible relationship. There's so many different factors. But a lot of times in a day, or if I'm asking you to buy my product, to buy my services, and you hear no, it's like, oh my gosh, it's the end of wor the world. It's not. You know what? It's no for now. And it doesn't mean, hey, you're horrible. It doesn't mean, Omar, you're horrible. It's just the simplest of words. Two letters, one syllable. <laughs> no. Okay, well, that's fine. You know, God gave us abundance. There's so many people out there to ask if you want to if they want to buy your product or services or to go out with me. There, there's millions of women out there. I don't live, even if I lived in Mayberry with the internet and a town of a hundred, well, that was one no, that there's probably 50 other women that, that I can ask out. And it's just that, it's just a no for now. Exactly, I like that. You know, I want to actually attack that, that issue of, no in business in just a minute, but I want to rewind just a second to this idea of hearing no from the people that want to protect us. Um, I'm a parent. Okay. And so one of the things as a parent that we do is we do try to protect our children because they're, uh, you know, our life, they're what's precious to us. And so when we come to 
tell our kids, hey, be careful. Don't do that. This may happen to you. Um, and, and I also understand that there's a little bit of a different perspective, I think, from a man versus a woman. But maybe we don't want to go there. I don't know. But, um, you know, you can, I, 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 <laughs> believe it or not, I've got I've got more female energy than male because <laughs> I was raised by my mother. So okay. I, I, I completely get it. I, I I, I do. And I, I'm a parent. I've got a 14 and a 16 year old, two teenage daughters. So I, I see my, my, my ex-wife and I, uh, we, we see things on the same level. So I, I, I agree with that comment that that's not okay. Like something. Okay. Well, the reason that I say it is because, you know, I may be like, oh my gosh, don't go in the woods because you might step on a snake. And my husband's like, oh my goodness, really? <laughs> you know? He's like, really? We'll, we'll just be careful. We'll look for it. You know, it's not something to stop you from going into the woods. But you, you made an interesting comment where you said that these things that are meant for good can end up instilling fear and cause like a lifetime of um, conflict almost. So how are we supposed to parent our children and keep them safe, you know, teach them to be careful to, without creating that fear to where they're not going to, um, you know, stay inside themselves and isolate and that kind of thing. What, what I, I would do, what my ex-wife does is it's no because of this. Have an explanation. Yes, go out in the woods. Be careful. We don't know what's out there, but you can't just say, no, don't go out there. You'll die. Don't, don't go out there, Jason or wh what, whomever all those movie killers are they're out there they're gonna they're gonna hurt you that that's the, that's the thing my mom was always no my, my mom was somebody that never even gave me the affirmations or the accolades or the cyber hugs or anything as a parent that that I needed but she did the best that she could for me mm -hmm. she was also only 20 years older than me so mm -hmm. that's that's why every, every, I would say communication is, is okay. with, with with our children Definitely. Yes. Yes. No. Why? How can this right. hurt you? How can it it help you thrive? Mm -hmm. Three bullet points. This this can happen. This may happen. Yeah, but don't don't go off the deep end and go. You know the woods. There's a snake. There's a man <laughs> with a machete. There, there's the Blair Witch. There's, there's, you know we don't we don't not, we don't want you to go out. And 40, 40 days in the desert and talk to Satan, you know, mm -hmm. you just, 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 just say all the positives and negatives mm -hmm. that can happen and just to be careful. Right. So it's more of a, like a, a logical analytical thing where you're laying everything out on the table and then you give a choice. And that's, I believe how God treats us, yes. you know, the Bible is filled with instructions and promises and so we have been told and then, but he gives us that choice to make the decision. And he I try to explain will. that. He, 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 what? Uh, yeah. he gave us free will. He gave yes. Adam and Eve yes. free will with, with the apple. Mm -hmm. he, he, yes. Accept Jesus Christ as your savior. If you want mm -hmm. ever, everlasting. Well, you can be an atheist and you can gamble and you can be like, well, Hey, you know what? Uh, or, you know, you can be a non-believer. You can be a believer in all those. And you can try your luck that way. Now, I, I'm not because, you know, I was raised to be a Christian. I was raised to be Catholic. And all of us Christians, all of us Gentiles, it, it's right there. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But yes, the one thing that God gave us was, was free will. And, and that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the beauty of it. That's why when you hear a lot of people, well, I'm a great guy. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to pray for, pray for wealth. I'm going to pray for happiness. no. God gave you free will. He wants you to, to thrive, but you have to go out there. Just because I'm a, a Christian and I'm a believer, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, well, I can't wait for my soulmate. No, I need to go out there. I, I need to go journey. I need to put my heart out there. I need to be vulnerable. That, that's what a lot of people, prayer works, but God gave you free will. And he's not going to say, well, you, you deserve you deserve the world. He gave you free will so you can go out there and create your own world. Right. All right. So we can, um, we can um, emulate God's love and say, Hey, this is what, um, 
the instructions are, these are the things that could happen, the good things, the bad things. And then we sit back and there's a lot of uh, school of thought on how to parent, how to date, how to um, do your job <laughs> and different things. Now, if you have a boss, you certainly want to, you know, follow the leadership skill. Um, sorry to follow the leadership there, mm-hmm. but um, we, we have choice. And, and even with your job, I guess you, you still have a choice because you can do what your boss says or not. And then you can not have a job or still have a job. <laughs> so if, if he's um, telling you do, uh, to do things that are not Christ-like, to be Christian needs to be to emulate and be more Christ-like. Mm-hmm. It's not the only job out there. Mm-hmm. We don't need to be in scarcity. There's an abundance of jobs out there. That's one right. job. God's telling you, hey, don't be here. Go, go somewhere where you can thrive, somewhere mm-hmm. where you can be a Christian, somewhere where you can help others and not mm-hmm. just help out the pocketbook of your, your boss or, your, mm-hmm. or the company that you're working for. And somewhere you don't have to live in fear. So let's talk about this um, rejection in, in business. So I myself am, am an entrepreneur and I hear a lot of people talk about um, rejection as far as being uh, an entrepreneur or in any business. What if, you know, I am going to put everything I have into this program or that program or this book um, and I lay it all out there and people don't like it. And I would, you know, not be telling the truth if I have wouldn't say that I've kind of struggled with this sometimes in my own, this idea of it's your baby kind of a thing. This is something that you've worked on really hard and you're going to present it. And there is some type of a, a fear there um, because I have seen on uh, social media, especially where there are a ton of big name coaches that come back and they say, I love it. I love it when people come to me and they come up with an issue, they have rejection. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, (laughs) you're okay with somebody, you know, being uh, rejecting you and maybe even saying choice words to you. So how do you, if you are, especially if you're a shy person, you know, if you really love what you do and you have a big heart for that, how do you um, move past this rejection? Is it something that, you know, as long as it happens initially, it hurts at first and then, you know, you move through it or is it dependent upon personality? How does that work? My personality is I'm always going to be shy. We don't change. We can just be aware. Mm-hmm. So am I always going to have that rejection? Yeah, completely. What you have to realize is being an entrepreneur, you have something that is great. Whatever it is that you're selling, whether it's a service, it's a product, uh, marketing, whatever it is that you're selling, you are there because you believe in yourself. You believe in your company. You believe in your product that it's answering other people's needs, their wants. It's solving a problem. Now, if one person or two people or three people reject you or don't want to use your service, it's just like dating. Maybe you're giving a product that that's way above their means. Maybe it's like it's like if you're a department store and you're Neiman Marcus but they're JC pennies. It's just not going to click. And that's what you have to understand. There's plenty of other people. The more you go past your comfort zone, that's where success lies. Yes. There's going to be people. If, if Walt Disney doesn't have a hundred percent approval, if Apple computers, if Starbucks, if they have plenty of naysayers, plenty of people that go, I don't like the product. Who, who are we? A lot of times we have this fear that they don't want our products, so we go chasing them. The old, never chase clients, never chase the sale, never chase friendship or love. Only chase your dreams. That's that's a really good um, bit of advice there, because when we get caught up in chasing um, the people mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and the um the ability to, uh, well, I guess it would be acceptance. When we get caught up in chasing the acceptance, then that's what our focus goes to. And, uh, you know, I've been telling people for a while now that like, it's really, everything comes back to this idea of focusing on God instead of our circumstances. When we focus on our circumstances, if it uh, has to do with any type of lack, 
that is where our mind is going to be. That is where our heart is going to be all the time. However, if we focus on God and his ability, um, (laughs) the, the fact that he is our creator and the fact that he is able to do anything for us, um, then we are able to move out of that stronghold, out of that space where we cannot move. So I think that's a um, good set of advice not to ever chase. um, No, because when you start chasing, you start disbelieving yourself. You don't believe in yourself anymore. You don't believe in your product. You don't believe in your services. And then you start discounting your service. You start discounting you why would you do that god made you to be superior to have a superior product to to believe in yourself your your item whatever it is that you're selling is the answer to someone's problem Mm -hmm. and if you discount yourself you're like well 50 percent off or or friday's five dollars then it's like in a relationship you start if well it's like when you, you, you hear that friend, well, I don't go out with a smoker, but this, but th- then, then you start throwing the, but well, mm-hmm. but this person's nice, but, but this client, but how about if this is the only person that will buy from me, then you start losing your values. You start losing your focus and mm-hmm. you start chasing and you start your, your company that you had such high standards, you had such high standards for yourself, you cheapened yourself, you cheapened your product, and you cheapened everybody else that was a raving fan that believed in you and your services. I love that. I know that people struggle with mindset a lot. And um, it, it's a real thing. It's just like, oh, like yes. that rejection that you talked about and, and um, feeling of, of being unworthy. These are real valid uh, feelings. But when you start looking at it and saying, hey, I'm not going to chase this acceptance and I'm not going to cheapen what I know that God has given me because God instills talents and gifts in us before we're even born. Mm -hmm. So that is such a good reminder to everybody in the audience and, and everybody that, you know, we speak uh, to beyond this podcast. And then the other thing that you do uh, is just to understand that we're cheapening ourselves by chasing that acceptance because we have to stand in what God has given us in the very beginning, which is gifts and talented talents that are unique for each of us as individuals. And and, and I'll give you three companies, Christian based companies that have never lowered their standards that have taken shots from critics. By being I know two of them. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. well, one, you might be shocked because they're very Christian. Well, one, you know, Hobby Lobby. Yes. Two, Chick Fil A. Yes. And three is a company thriving in Southern California and has raving fans all over this country. In and Out Burger. In and Out Burger. Yes. Oh, okay. In and Out Burger is a very Christian yeah. organization. On the back of their cups, on the back of their wrappers. They always have a Bible verse. Love it. Love it. So that actually brings me to another uh, question that I want to ask you. So one of the recent things that we've been talking about lately in in my little circle is this idea of bringing Christianity into your business and um, in doing a lot of uh, events uh, online before um, that is something that I talked to my speakers about is this idea of hey, I'm a Christian and I have a business, but am I, um, do I have a Christian business? Okay. Do I utilize my business just like every other aspect of my life to uh, profess my my faith and um, help people um, know who Christ is and have a deeper relationship with him? And, and the answer sometimes is no, we keep those things separately, but I don't hide it. And then sometimes people are like, yes, absolutely. That is right in the center of my business. So what are your thoughts on that? My, my two books that has Jesus Christ in it, has my belief in it, has God in it. Definitely the third book that I'm writing about my love for God and Jesus and my faith has it. I I don't see why it's a problem. I don't, I don't see why, what difference does it make? We spoke earlier to be Christ-like means to be more like him, to more like Jesus Christ. 
So is that a bad thing? I, I've even even those. Okay, like Muslims believe that he's a prophet. So if you say you're a Christian, at least to me that means in their their hearts. Okay, well that's good because he to them they acknowledge he was a good man. So mm -hmm. you have the Muslims. You have Christ, Christianity is to me is fine because we're in a country where whether it's Catholic or any other form of Protestant, it, we're the majority in this country. Now, if, if we're in like the Far East or the Middle East or somewhere, yeah, it could probably hinder because there's you know not many Christians. But I don't see why it's a problem. It, th this is something that the media, oh, th this person is, is on the deep end because he's, he's right or because he's this. But there's nothing wrong with being for professing your love by saying you're I've, I've gone to plenty of businesses that say they're they're a Christian based business. Mm -hmm. And to me, more power to them. I, at least I feel more comfortable in them than, you know, a non-believer, because at <laughs> least I give them the benefit of the doubt that, yes, they'll be more Christ like. That's all. Right. I, I don't I don't see how that would be a hindrance. Right. Yeah. It, you know, and, and I've had people come to me um, in, in coaching and say, hey, is this uh, do you coach people who are not uh, Christians? And I'm like, absolutely. But the thing is, is I can't tell you um, I can coach you, but I, I can't tell you about me and my story and how I got to you know move forward without saying that God, it was all God. You know, my life exponentially changed because the Lord has been there. Like you said, when we first opened up this interview, he's there and he shows up. And even when we um, experience loss and things that are, are not good circumstances, things that we don't like, things that take us out of our comfort zone or are just downright, um, you know, throw us on the ground and try to trample us. You know, he's there, even if we don't see it in the moment. Um, do you have any maybe final uh, encouragement for somebody out there who says, you know what, it sounds really like you have overcome fear. It sounds like you've had some things, but I'm right in the center of it right now. And it's a, it's a little hard. <laughs> it's a little easier to say than it is to do. Do you have any advice for somebody like that? Any yes, encouragement? Yes. The one thing when I, when somebody tells me that they're lonely, I'm like, how can you be lonely? You have two people that are with you at all times, yourself, which is amazing company because we're all amazing people, all billion. I, I lost count at that 20 because I only have 20 fingers and toes, but, and you have God. God mm -hmm. is always there through the thick, the thin, the bad. You sin, you're not a sinner. It's like, I, I tell people, you know, at times they're like, oh, well, you know, I, I'm a sinner. And I tell him, Jesus Christ didn't hang out with the emperor in Rome. He hung out with flawed people because he knew we were flawed and he loved that. So he wants each and every one of us to thrive. He wants everybody in this audience to thrive. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong. You know, we all have bad days. I mean, we all have a bad hour, but limited 24 hour rule. Okay. You had a bad day. Snap out of it. You had an amazing day. Snap out of it. When you had a bad day, that's God and the universe telling you, we give you these so you can really appreciate the blessed and appreciate the beautiful days that are ahead. Right. Definitely. I, he uses our circumstances to teach us and to help us uh, gain wisdom and knowledge and all that, that kind of thing. Um, certainly, I have seen it. Do you uh, recommend that people uh, do anything like journal or uh, oh, just yes. read the Bible? What do you think about that? I, I read the Bible because mm -hmm. it's there. <laughs> plenty of good answers, plenty of good stories. There, the thing that people don't understand is they hate adversity. Mm -hmm. But the whole Bible from the right. Old Testament to the New Testament is about success. It's about people overcoming some serious challenges. You mm -hmm. had David going after Goliath. Ever since that story, we love the the un, you know the underdog. overachiever, the yeah. underdog. We love that because <laughs> we can see ourselves yeah. in that. So yes, 
And journal, journal makes you close to me, closer to God, because you write down your issues. Mm -hmm. God, God knows everything. But if you're open about it, you're open about your challenges, you write down what you want. Mm -hmm. And you be you're specific. God, this is what I, I have planned. This is what I want. This is what I'm going for. I want to be I, I, I want to create an extraordinary life. I want to motivate. I want to inspire others to be the underdog. Mm -hmm. So yes, journal, pray, pray. I pray. I tell people, okay, what, with non-believers or people that you, usually I talk to other Christians. So I tell them to pray. Mm -hmm. I, I tell others to meditate. It's the same thing. It's just the vanilla way of being safe because you don't want to profess. Oh my gosh, this guy prays, but yes, pray in the morning, pray at night before you go to bed. But when you in the morning, wake up and you go, Oh my God, thank you. Thank you for giving me today. Today's the only day we have today is the now today. You gave me a chance to be a better version of who I was yesterday. Thank mm -hmm. you, God. Thank you, God, for giving me Lauren and Mia, my 16 and 14 year old. Thank you for giving me health. Thank you for giving me sound mind. Thank you for having my grandparents still alive at 97 and 92 and my mother. There's so much to be thankful for. If people are more grateful for, well, I have, you have AC. We're, we're, we're clear, clearly on Wi-Fi. We have one running water. We have so much to be blessed for. Everybody focuses on what they don't have. You know what you do have, you have God. God gave you free will and God gave you another day to do whatever it is that you want to do. I love that. I love the idea of the fresh start. And I also love the idea of the journal. I'm trying to get my kids to embrace the uh, prayer journal, which is what it sounded like you were talking about, where, um, you know, the first question was, why do we why do we need to write this down? Because we just pray. And my answer to that was because you have a running record of documentation that shows exactly. you God's blessings and you can show how you are grateful. Because so. a lot of times people are, are sad and they're like, oh, God hasn't done. But if you wrote it down, you can see 365 days. Mm -hmm. Not only have you improved so much in mm -hmm. such a little time, but you can see, look at everything that God has given you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Instead of playing the victim, vic so many people want to play victim. Well, he gave you life. He gave you the ultimate gift. So many mm -hmm. people in a nursing home wish they had that. I, I can take my children to a cemetery and go, these people wish they had what you have today. One more day to do whatever it is that you want. Right, definitely. So Omar, can you tell our audience where they can find you? Definitely. You can find me on Instagram, Omar Madrano 73. Uh, mm -hmm. Facebook, I'm public as well, Omar Madrano. Uh, my website, omarmadrano.com. Uh, a free on Facebook, a group called What If It Did Work? Just videos. Uh, yes, I talk about God. I talk about Jesus. I talk about how to be thankful. I talk about how to strive for more in your life as an entrepreneur. Yes. Am I a Christian entrepreneur? Yes. But ultimately God made me a Christian the day I was born. I love it. I love it. So we thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all of the guests who are listening and continue to be blessed and bless others. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thank you. God bless. Are you looking to enhance your homeschool curriculum by learning about the Holy Land, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about Israel yourself? Artsa has a subscription box that takes you on a journey through the Holy Land. Each quarter, they feature a different city in Israel and tell its story past and present, while sourcing amazing items not found anywhere else from seven to eight local artisans. Artsa provides a mix of food, gifts, and magnificent content that delivers the Holy Land to your doorstep, all while supporting the small businesses and people who call the Holy Land home. Grab your code in the show notes for 25% off of your Artsa box. Artsa Christina Reisinger. That's A-R-T-Z-A-K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-R-I-S-I-N-G-E-R.
And I want to thank you for joining us on Faith Breathed Hope, where you gain inspiration and motivation to renew hope and discover purpose in any circumstance. Please like and share this podcast and give us a review on iTunes. Be blessed.